Okay, this is the second one, how to solve by completing the square. So, what they're going to give you is, uh, just like the one before, it's going to start uh, like this. So, hey, this looks different than the one we had uh, just a minute ago, right? Well, what you have to do is you have to make it look exactly like the one we did a minute ago. So, we're going to make it look like that, yes, um, that uh, completing the square. So, you have to figure out what half the middle is. Right? So, half the middle. And then square it. So, half of this is 3. 3 squared is 9. So, what's different about this? is there's an equal sign in the problem and you have to put a 9 on the both sides. Where the blanks are, you have to put a 9. Now then, remember the reason I told you the other day, the heard the other day, just a few minutes ago, you want to be able to factor this. And remember that what's inside the factor is always half of what the middle is. So if this is negative 6, half of the middle is negative 3. And then look over here, We've got negative 5 plus 9, that's 4. Now then, we want to be able to solve this. Now the cool thing about this is that I can solve this and there's two answers. Now, whenever I solve a problem that has squares in it, I have to take the square root of both sides and see that cancels that out. And so I will have over here, I will have x minus 3 equals, you know the square root of 4? I knew you did. And there's always one positive and one negative. x minus 3 equals 2. So the square root of 4 is positive 2, the square root of 4 is negative 2. You have to write them both down, right? And now to solve this, you're going to say, you're going to add 3 to both sides, right? So I add 3, x is 1, because negative 2 plus 3 is 1, or x is, now I add 3 over here, x is 5. Woo woo! We just solved it. And remember, what are we doing when we solve something? Uh, when you solve a quadratic equation, you're finding the x-intercepts. So I know that this parabola this is a parabola, and it crosses at positive 5 and positive 6. That's what we just did. So, sometimes they work out even. Let me show you one that's not even. Okay? So, here we go. What if I had x squared minus 4x plus 1 equals 0? Whoa! Okay, well the first thing you have to do is the x's have to be by themselves on the left hand side of the equal sign and the 1 has to be on the other side. So I'm going to subtract the 1 then I'll have x squared minus 4x I have no idea negative 1 plus I have no idea. Right? That's the whole idea. You have to move it over here so that you can get it ready to solve. Now then, half of the middle is 2, half is negative 2, squared is 4. Right? So I'm adding 4 to both sides. Well, super d duper. What do I get? Well, I know that I can factor this guy, because remember that inside the parentheses it's always half of what this is, so that's x minus 2 equals over here, what's negative 1 plus, that's 3. Alright, x minus 2 equals 3. So what do we do to solve the last one? Well, I had to say, I know that in order to get rid of this guy, I have to take square roots of both sides. So this cancels out this, and I get x minus 2 equals the square root of 3, or x minus 2 equals the one of them is positive and one of them is negative. 
Positive square root of 3 and negative square root of 3. Now, check out the answer. I have to add 2 to both sides. Don't be that person that adds this to get 5. That's not right. You cannot add a whole number and a radical. So it has to look like this. Positive 2 minus square root of 3. Or over here, whenever I add the 2, I get positive 2 plus the square root of 3. That's what we're looking for. And you say, well, I thought we were looking for the x-intercepts. We are looking for the x-intercepts. Those are the x-intercepts. So, you know, it's possible to have x-intercepts that are not whole numbers. There's nothing wrong with that. And so, you know, if you were looking for a decimal answer, this would be um, 3.732. Here, let's just write it down. 3.732. And the other one would be 0 0.268. Right? No problem. We can find this, the x-intercepts. And so, you know, the parabola is going to cross right here and right here. There's nothing wrong with that. Those are the x-intercepts. That's how you do it. It's just like that. Okay, come back for the third video. It's a doozy.